Hey everyone, this is Eric, KJ4YZI. I have a piece of gear here from my YouTube channel. You've probably seen my video on YouTube of the Leeson or Lyxan uh, UV898. This is the LX928. This is a basic entry level UHF only. This, is, this model is UHF only. Uh, handheld transceiver that will cover 400 to 470 megahertz and it has all your functions that you've seen on a Bofung such as the flashlight, it has your FM radio, it has your tones for your repeater, it has PC programmability on the computer so a lot of the features are very basic so I'm going to just do a quick uh, unbox here and show you some of the things here that are different about this compared to a Bofung and uh, hook it up to the computer and show you programming made simple because that seems to be a popular subject on my videos is getting it to work on the programming so I'll just show you it working on my device or my computer okay so I've already taken this out used it tested it put it back in for review purposes so I'm just going to show you uh, it, you know what it how it is when it comes eBay card make sure you rate them highly if you're satisfied okay uh, the manual the manual is very important we all know this uh, the manual shows you Everything about the radio, uh, they're getting a lot better writing these manuals. There's only a couple words that were off, you know, but but the translation is actually pretty good. But the menu shows you all the different functions uh, of what it'll do and how to get to those functions, how to charge it, how to put the battery on and whatnot. So read the manual, it'll answer a lot of questions that this video may not. So pretty standard setup here, radio, battery, charging base, wall charger, antenna, which is a UHF only SMA antenna, which will fit your Bofung radio. So if you have an aftermarket antenna, it will fit on here. And under the battery, you have your wrist tether, which is very important to keep on there so you don't drop the thing. And under the radio, you have your belt clip and screws. Okay, so for this video, I'm just going to take out what I need. Skip the uh, stuff here. You know all about it. Okay. And by the way, this charger, this radio doesn't seem to fit any chargers. Uh, that I have for Bofong or Saint Sonic, so this is an exclusive charger for this radio. So you're going to have to put that one on your desk with the other ones, all right? So <clears throat> the radio, uh, you're pretty familiar with putting a battery on. Oh, I notice here that there's a rubber gasket here for the effectiveness of dust and maybe outdoor elements. I'm not going to say it's waterproof, but it's designed to be used outdoors. So they try to make the radio uh, with a speaker that's adequate for outdoor environment as well as the uh, gasket around here and the battery goes on there pretty tight you know snaps right on and to release it you just push the switch here and then slide the back off all right and the antenna like I said is an SMA antenna so this will screw right on they're doing pretty good with the antennas I have to say I have a Bifeng not a Bofeng a Bifeng DMR uh, TD501 which I'll have on review shortly and uh, it's from China, and the antenna that came with it outperforms superior to a $24 or $30 Smiley 5 8 wave uh, aftermarket antenna. The, the stock antenna does way better job. So they're, they're getting pretty good, uh, China, with these. All right, so the first thing I feel when I look at this and feel it is a UV82. That reminds you exactly of a Bofeng UV82L or UV82 handheld. Uh, the weight, the size, the way the keyboard, the keyboard's laid out, it, uh, that's what it reminds me of. On the right, you'll have your mic and speaker, which is standard to the same Sane Sonic or Bofeng programming cable. In fact, in this video, I'll show you in a little bit here, if I can find my cable. Uh, I did program this, and I'll show you, with my Bofeng programming cable. So you don't have to buy another one if you already have one. It will fit in here and work. That's a plus. You don't have to get their own exclusive cable. Make sure this is pushed back in there for dust and water resistance. On the left side, you'll see a PTT button, and you'll see two other buttons. Now, the UV82 has similar buttons like this, but these are programmable, P1 and P2. You can have them as a short press and a long press, meaning you can program this in the software or on the front of the radio. So that P1 as a short press will go into FM radio or a long press will turn on the flashlight. Okay, And P2 can be a uh, short press will scan and a long press will change power. Whatever functions are available, you can assign them to these keys. That may be a plus for a, uh, a quick you know, 
instead of going through the menu to find uh, the squelch or, or the uh, scan or whatnot, you can assign them to this. Okay, that's a plus. Uh, but overall, the keypad here, you'll you remember, or if you're familiar with a Bofeng, the menu features could be accessed by the front of the radio, which these say too. You have your squelch, your low and high power save. But the difference is when you turn this on, when you turn this on, you'll notice that you can't push menu and then one for squelch. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to use the function key on the bottom right. So this is something different. The function key, you press function and one, that'll bring you up to your squelch. You can manipulate the parameters here with the arrows and then press VM here to exit. Okay. Uh, the Bofeng I like because you can do menu and then 26 to do the offset and then just go right to 25 for the tone and 13 for the shift or however that was. You can't do that with this. You have to hit function and if you want the shift you'd press 9 for repeater here. That'll give you your positive or negative shift or simplex uh, for repeater operation. So when you're done just hit VM and it'll exit you back to the uh, frequency or channel mode. So that is, you know, it's not hard nor uh, confusing, but it's different from the Bofeng. If you're used to your menu and what num menu numbers you had, this will be a little different. But the menu structure has the same features. Uh, automatic power off, for instance, battery saver, busy channel lockout, turn the beep on or off. Some people do not like that beep. Uh, you know, dual watch, the lamp, the lock, stuff like that. There's a few things in here that are different, such as... Like I said, the uh, the P1 and P2 programming for these buttons. So P2 long, P2 short press. Long press and short press, you can assign the, uh, like FM would be, P2 short press would put me into an FM radio, uh, 88 to 108 megahertz. All right. Um, but let's go, let's go to the, the uh, FM now. We, we can do it this way too. We can hit function and number eight. Speaker is rather loud and tinny. It doesn't have any bass at all to it. It's very tinny. Somewhat annoying if you have it up 100%. So this this is, let me compare it to this. My ID 51 anniversary edition doesn't get this loud. Okay, this is quite loud. Almost distorting loud when you turn it all the way up. But at least when I'm driving down the road, I can hear it compared to my ID51, which I have to have right up to my ear to even hear anything. Um, cool thing is, this actually scans. When you hit channel up, it'll put you on the next channel it finds. That's something Bofeng didn't have. Alright, uh, the Bofeng, you went by 0.1 increments to find the station you want. This one will actually scan. So if there's a radio station, 98.7 the Gator, there it is. All right. Again, the speaker is quite tinny, and we'll hit function and FM, and it'll put us back into uh, <clears throat> amateur operation. So um, overall, I like the feel of it. I like the size, the, the weight of it. I mean, it's not bad. If you're a tech or you're becoming a tech, congratulations on your upgrade. Uh, you might just be interested in a standard uh, UHF for the repeaters that are around you to give it a shot. Um, this will do you well. If you're using this for business band, like you work in a, a hotel or a certain business where you'll have five or six of them, uh, these will work on the uh, FRS frequencies and uh, some other frequencies out of the hand band. And also another feature if you're using this for a commercial would be the ability to set a password so that if you have uh, you know, this in the break room or you have this uh, when you're off duty and you don't want a fellow peer to pick it up and start uh, transmitting with it without your use, without your authorization, you can set a password to where when you turn it on, it'll ask you for a code that you set. And that can also be set in the programming software. I'll show you that. But uh, you can use this for business band or commercial also with a PTT ID. So that right here, PTT ID, so that you can see who's calling you. Each radio will have its own ID. And you can see in a business or commercial environment, you can see which radio that is transmitting. So that's a plus two. Uh, but a lot of the Bofeng radios already have that, so it's not a new feature. So uh, overall, let me show you the PC uh, programmability. The software link, 
to the software is actually on micklore.com or .net. You're familiar with micklore if you've been using Bofung for a while. Uh, the link is in the description for where I got this and where you can get the programming software. So let's hook it up to the computer and see what we got. All right, so go open a browser. Easiest place to get your uh, software and drivers for this and many other radios the Chinese market has to offer. Just go to micklore.com, M-I-K-L-O-R.com, and uh, go down here <coughs> to the LX928, right here. Click on that, and you will go to the page specifically for the LX928. Go down here to factory programming software and you should see two here the RAR file and the EXE file. Just go ahead and click on the EXE. It's a self-executable very easy to uh, to do it for you. Now understand this. Go right down below this and this software for some reason has a username and password to access it. I don't know why. Don't ask me how to change it. But once you download, download this and install it you'll get an icon like this somewhere on your computer. Go ahead and click it and guess what? There it is. So the user like it says on the page is ham. The password is 928 like the LX928 and then 12345 928 12345 comes up to your generic standard programming just like uh, all the other ones I've reviewed here go to tool communication port pick the uh, com port you're on I'm on three all right um, and go to read from radio make sure your radio is turned on on a free channel in VFO mode and hit read all right, now uh, it'll get all your frequencies and sometimes it will come up with this but you'll see it got all the frequencies here and then it gives you that error I guess that means it's it's done reading or what sometimes it'll go all the way across sometimes it won't I don't have a cure for that yet the uh, RST 599 review did the same thing I didn't have a problem programming it though uh, seems that sometimes it goes sometimes it doesn't but all the stuff gets saved one way or another I don't know why so sometimes it gets right here and fails. That time it went through. When it's done, you hit close. Here's all your memory stuff here that you can do, um, as well as optional features over here. FM radio. It's got 30 memories here for FM radio, and it has 199 memories for UHF amateur or business band operations. Uh, different settings here that are easier to get to here than they are on the actual radio. Uh, some things you may not need that you may not uh, want to mess with. All right, I'm curious what this question mark does here. No idea. Uh, if you'd like to do that, take a risk and uh, leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. And um, up here is special function. This is some stuff you may not need to play with either. If you're the casual user on UHF, you won't really need this. Your uh, password, like I showed you before, for business operations or whatnot. Here's where you'd enter the password. All right and uh, you'd want to check that right new password when you write it back to radio. Key assignment, this is where the two P1 and P2 buttons are uh, programmed. So like I said, P1, long short, long press and short press. Long press is determined by this time up here. I like to keep it at like a minute or a second. Uh, but holding it for a second would be a long press, so you can make it uh, FM radio, and then a short press would turn on the LED on top. And then P2, which is the lower one, uh, we can do a long press would be scan and a short press would be uh, transmit power to switch your power uh, very you know quickly instead of having to, to do it on the front. So all those features are uh, explained before in the video and uh, d auto dial memory for different DTMF strings for Echolink or IRLP repeaters. You can uh, set them up here that way you don't have to memorize which one goes for you know how to dial Montana or whatever you're going to do. So that's it. When you're done, uh, go up here to file. I tell you to save it here. Um, make a file so that way as you add things to it, you don't have to uh, worry about losing information. And if you want to transfer it to another computer for a friend or whatnot, you have a saved file. And then you'll just go up here to program, go to write to radio, and uh, you'll send it. There's also radio information. tells you your, uh, let's see, the, the user here. I'm not sure if you could change that. Nope. The factory time, I guess that was when it was built, and the model and the frequency range. So, uh, you know, that's that's for uh, channel information or radio information. If we go to optional features, that's what this is here on the front, and uh, channel information will be this over here. So, that's pretty much it. Um, 
Hope this summed it up for you. Hope you enjoyed it, and look forward to my other videos. 7-3 from KJ4YZ. Mm -hmm.